He looked bigger and stronger and badder than everybody else. Toss it out to Fournette. Here he goes. Plays it by. See ya. This kid is playing on a different planet right Leonard Fournette going after his fourth consecutive game of over 200 yards rushing. Rod, he is an indomitable force right now on the field. Drawing comparisons to Earl Campbell, Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker. You see the numbers there. If he gets a buck 36 today, he'll get to 1,000 yards and be only the 10th player to do that in five games. And, man, he dominated September. Won the September Heisman if there was <laughs> such a thing. Question is, what will he do going forward? Leading rusher in the nation. Almost 900 yards already. Meanwhile, folks, uh, LSU winning the toss, deferring to the second half. So South Carolina will receive. Fournette will sit temporarily as the Gamecocks will get the football first. Steve Spurrier, the head coach of South Carolina in his 11th year. Right now, this team a little bit sideways, trying to snap out of a three-game conference losing streak. They're two and three overall, and the quarterbacking situation hasn't gotten any better in the last week either getting ready for the opening kick LSU has won the last five in a row against South Carolina Carson watches it go out of bounds it'll be out to the 35 yard line and Perry Orth is going to be the starting quarterback, making his second start of the year. His last start was a 52-20 loss against Georgia. There is a look at the numbers on him. Orth completing just 49% of his passes on the season. One touchdown against two interceptions. And trying to get back on track after Lorenzo Nunez started the last two games at quarterback. Nunez coming on the heels of Connor Mitch the number one quarterback coming out of camp but he suffered a shoulder injury against Kentucky and still will be back for a few more weeks Rob. so well, the carousel continues yeah. to spin yeah and the big change the big issue for Perry Orth is finding a rushing attack because Nunez was the leading rusher at the quarterback spot David Williams is in a tailback and that's Farrell Cooper on the jet sweep Arguably the most dynamic player offensively for South Carolina. Run out of bounds by Tredavious White. And so when you lose Nunez, you lose a lot of your zone read quarterback making things happen. So you need guys like Cooper to get involved with the rushing attack. He's the Swiss Army knife of this offense. He can play receiver. He can play quarterback. He can line up in the backfield. A lot of touches for him today, right? I would think so. Second down and seven coming up for Perry Orth. Three receivers out to the right, and he's going to fire. That ball thrown a little bit high intended for Terry Gouger. And it'll be third down and long for the Gamecocks coming up. Kevin Tolliver providing the coverage that time. I mentioned Orth started the Georgia game. Struggled in that contest as his team lost 52-20. to Former walk-on looking at third down and seven. Uh, he's a pocket passer. LSU knows where he will be. They will send their guys right at him. Fourth quick drop. And it's going to be Cooper, Cooper, and more Cooper today. First down on the catch. Thomas makes the tackle. Rod, how do they make it easier for Orth at quarterback today? Well, you have to have a lot of high percentage passes, short passes. Try to get him some things that are easy for him to do. Remember, confidence. You're talking about a guy who had a 6-for-17 game against Georgia. So get his confidence going with the short passes. Three receivers out to the left this time. It's good protection. Or tries to squeeze it into a very tight window, incomplete. Intended for Gujar, who caught the earlier pass. It'll be second down and 10. You know, Jones, he, he, Orth is facing a defense that is loaded with playmakers. A lot of speed, a lot of guys who can get after the quarterback, a lot of corners and safeties who can play man-to-man -man coverage and press you all over the field. So the windows will not be large. Well, we saw number 52 there on the screen, Kendall Beckwith, real impact player. David Williams on the carry 
Yeah, he's on the carry, but I tell you, Deion Jones got there in a hurry from his linebacking spot. You mentioned Beckwith and Jones together. That tandem inside does a tremendous job. Very fast. Both of them able to really run sideline to sideline. Loss of one on the play, partner. Third down and 11. Steve Spurrier with a reputation for innovation on offense. Swings it up top and caught. Farrell Cooper with a first down. Got in behind the coverage of Dwayne Thomas. And no flags on the play. Actually, there is a flag down. I think they got LSU offside. Offside on the defense, number 92. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Boy, that was a well-thrown ball. I was going to say, how about the throw by Orth? Drops it in very nicely. Cooper out of the slot. Beats right off the line of scrimmage Dwayne Thomas. He was playing him. And what a perfect throw by Orth. Orth, a 42-yard pass. Cooper, remember, a first-team all-conference click preseason-wise. And that was the 100th reception of his career. First and ten. Orth completes it out of the backfield. That's David Williams, and Williams stopped up immediately just inside the 10-yard line at about the 9. Remember, Brandon Wiles was supposed to return offensively this week. He's the usual starting tailback, number 22, right now in the sidelines, though. Did I, did I remember you saying early, Cooper, Cooper, and more <laughs> Cooper? He's already had, what, three touches on this drive. He's been the big factor alongside Force. Great throw on that 42-yarder. We got a flag down on the play. Yeah, Rod, how many different places you think we'll see him line up here today? Hmm. Everything Illegal but... Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men on the field. Penalty is five yards. Second down. He, he can play every spot except the offensive line. Okay. <laughs> we'll see him everywhere. Probably line up the quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, slot. He'll be all over the place. He's the SEC's leading returning receiver from a season ago. About 69 passes for 1,136 yards, second down and 11 after that penalty. Orth fires incomplete. Good pressure up front by Godshaw. Number 57 with some good penetration. You know, Jones, I think Cooper's going to get a lot of attention. Watch Thomas manhandling him. He's got that left arm wrapped around him. Cooper might be well advised to say, hey, Mr. Official. Legal? Mr. Official. Is that illegal? Well, as long as the ball's not in the air, he can put his hands on But he had it wrapped up pretty good. That arm gets around the backside. Mm. That's, that's holding. Well, another third down and long coming up for South Carolina. They've converted twice already on this opening drive. Orth is going to take off. Got a lot of room. Orth stopped cold at about the three-yard line. Looks like he may have gotten enough for the first down. Kendall Beckwith prevented him from launching and going airborne. And it looks like he might have enough for that first down. Yeah, great decision to take off. There was just a huge lane there for Orth. Not going to run over Beckwith. He's 252, <laughs> but that, that's a first down. First and goal for South Carolina. Orth rolling out, trying to hit the corner. Incomplete. Intended for Farrell Cooper, broken up by Dwayne Thomas. Well, head coach Les Miles of the Tigers asked the fans not to cheer quite as loudly against South Carolina because technically this is a home game for South Carolina, but... I wonder how long that deal's going to hold, Rod, here with this opening drive. I don't think his heart was in it when he said that. <laughs> he might have said it to be politically correct, but I don't think he really meant it. Okay. <laughs> Sean Carson in the backfield now. Second and goal. Cooper, the inside receiver at the top of your screen. Orth fires. Had a man wide open. Incomplete. 
for Belton. Matrick Belton was wide open and Perry Orr threw it behind him. Got excited. Ooh. He had him wide open at six foot four Belton and Orth overthrew him. Now, Jonesy, we've seen on tape during the week that Orth tends to miss his passes high, mm. even though he has tall receivers. Gets a little excited. Gets it up there a little bit too much. Boy, that was six points. You know, I do like Adams. They're tight end down here. He's six foot six. Third and goal. Or flushed out now. Throws it incomplete. Patrick Belton was the closest receiver. Lewis Neal in hot pursuit. And in comes the field goal unit on this opening drive for the Gamecocks. It's a good stop for Kevin Steele's defense. Really kind of getting tough down there inside the five-yard line when South Carolina had a first and goal. Little surprise South Carolina didn't even at least try mm. to run it in at some point down there. Interesting play selection. And in comes Elliott Fry, 10 of 14 on the season. Knocks this one through from 21 yards out. It was Fry that said he's excited to play in the quote unquote real Death Valley. You hear that, Clemson fans? Back after this. Your daughter's going to love to your place. Stay thirsty, my friends. Get you back to the game momentarily. Adnan Burke in our college football studios. Georgia and Tennessee. Nick Chubb, who last week broke Herschel Walker's school record. 13th straight 100-yard rushing game, suffering that injury there. Your discretion, because the replay was tough to look at. Right now, crying on the sidelines. Awful to see. Mark, back to you. Well, you think about Chubb here and then Gurley last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Georgia backs uh, getting hit and suffering... Hopefully not a serious injury here. Yeah, it's awful. Yep. But uh, this is the first time that LSU has trailed all season. South Carolina, the first opponent to score any points in the first quarter against LSU this year. And Leonard Fournette starting tailback, looking for his fourth consecutive 300-yard game. And uh, he's getting some good help from the guys up front. Yeah, how about a couple of freshmen up front? 75, Maya Tahama, and 64, William Clapp. They hunt linebackers which creates big running lanes and big runs for Fournette. Watch him here against Auburn. Watch him get to the second level, knock off some linebackers, and the huge hole that's created. Great vision there. He sees the big lane. Hey, and when those shoulders are pointed toward the goal line, not a lot of guys want to get in front of him. Now with that 10.6 uh, 100 meter speed, look at those numbers. What do those numbers say to you exactly? Well, that number on the left tells you that offensive line is doing a great job. The number on the right says he's doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty potent combination, but here they come out passing to Fournette on first down. Just his third reception of the season, so I guess he can catch two rod, a pick well, up of nine on the play. Yeah, talking to Les Miles yesterday and Cam Cameron, one of the things we asked him about was, hey, how complete a back is he? I mean, he hasn't caught that many passes, and he said, hey, trust us. <laughs> He's going to catch the ball a lot more as this season goes along, and they opened up with that. Ran for over 1,000 yards last year, averaged five and a half per pop. Second down and one for LSU. Cornette on the toss into the boundary. And he picks up the first down, gaining three yards. Jonathan Walton on the stop. He runs angry. Cornette runs with an attitude. He's not a guy who's going to slow down when he sees you or necessarily try to juke you. He will outrun you, or he will run you over. He's a guy that uh, has been the subject of Louisiana football lore since the time he was a freshman in high school. First down and 10. Got some talented freshman offensive linemen up front, too, between the tackles. Rod, the difference between what we saw earlier on that toss and him that time, shoulder square, going north-south is what exactly? Well, I, I think, this is just me personally, if you want to deal with him, you need to have his shoulder pads facing the sideline. When he goes side to side, he doesn't have his Superman powers. <laughs> you know, but when those shoulders are pointed at you, that's when it's all him, and you get every bit of him. And so if he's going sideways, that's when you attack. And if they do it by choice, you like that. 
On second and nine, he's got the fullback, J.D. Moore, out in front of him this time. Harris under duress and escaping. Fires incomplete out of bounds at the 44-yard line, intended for Traven Doral. Good heat up front by Marquavius Lewis in pursuit as we go downstairs for more from Quinn. Well, a critical third down for LSU here. They're passing offense, ranking 123rd in the country. And if you're Steve Spurry on the Gamecocks, you've dialed up a good start to this ball game. This is where you want to put LSU. Fournette, not a, as much of a threat in the running game right now. And we'll see how Brandon Harris can handle this third and long. This has been their Achilles heel all season long. You're right, Quinn. And now you can play coverage. The first couple of downs, they were trying to take away the run. Now you can see if you can actually steal one from them. Third down and long. Harris has time. Complete over the middle at the 45-yard line caught by Doral. And first and 10 for the Tigers. If there's anything that can hold LSU back, as Quint mentioned, it is the passing attack. They've only thrown for more than 100 yards in one game this season. So at some point, Harris is going to have to carry the team. And today is as good a day as any for them to get some work on the passing attack and take a little heat off of Fournette. First down and 10 from just inside the 45-yard line. Unless he's first possession of the ball game the toss to Fournette crosses the 40 to the 39 good straight arm as we go back to the studio and add non-vert thank you very much Jonesy the Taco Georgia Bell Tech studio Tech. update Georgia Tech and Clemson this is Wayne Gallman here the 66 yard run had that one block and after that he was sprung all the way to the house on ABC and ESPN 2 Clemson's up 10 to nothing Jonesy all right partner Six-yard gain on that play by Fournette. Came into the game averaging almost nine per carry. See that fullback, J.D. Moore, out in front of him. Harris on the bootleg. Good catch by Moore, and he's brought down immediately at the 37-yard line. Rod, you don't see a lot of teams with a fullback these days, almost extinct, and uh, he's shaken up on the play, too. Well, and he is a huge component of that rushing attack. I mean, he delivers crushing blocks and really kind of springs Fournette, and Fournette really appreciates mm -hmm. him a great deal. Yeah, so much so that after a game earlier this year, when... Fournette was given the MVP award of the game. He gave the game ball to that guy right there as fullback Moore. We'll check on him on the other side of this. Took them uh, a couple of days uh, to learn the music, study those sheets, and this was the scene pregame as they played it for the visitors from Columbia and throughout the state of South Carolina that made the trip. A wonderful and warm embracement and gesture by LSU. Third down and three. Fournette on the sidelines now. To fake the jet sweep. Harris, he can take off, and he does to make the first down at the 32-yard line. Another dimension that Harris gives you a five-yard game. You know, Jonesy, the LSU offense to me is at its best when it's running its two-back offense with more and with Fournette. I mean, Why? That's, that's when they show you their attitude. They mm. come at you. They run downhill. Now, they go to the one-back set. To me, they're a little bit more spread out, as you see right now, three wide receivers. Fournette not in the ballgame. Yeah, Geis in the backfield behind quarterback Brandon Harris or beside him. Harris to pass. Pumped it a couple times and overshoots his receiver. Malachi Dupree had him open, too. Oh, he, he didn't overshoot him. Chris Lamont's number three got away with one. Okay. <laughs> oh, it looked like that, but nice, subtle little trick. The left hand down low, he grabbed onto his receive, um, this receiver. Dupree. Sounds like a DB that's done that before yeah, beside me, it's folks. Just a trick or two out there. <laughs> got away. When your hand is down low, they didn't always see it. Hmm. Up around the shoulder pads, you'll get flat. So that slowed Dupree down a little yep. bit, huh? Sure did. Just enough. Tenth play of the drive coming up now for the Tigers. Nose of the ball resting at the 32-yard line. A whistle 
Timeout. And a timeout LSU. called by LSU. With time running down on the play clock with 7.01 to go here in the first quarter. The Mad Hatter going to think this one over. And we'll be back after this. Cal, Utah, tonight at 10 on ESPN. See Moore being worked on by the athletic training staff of LSU. He appeared to suffer some sort of leg injury. We've got Quint on the sidelines finding out what exactly is going on. Meanwhile, Mouton in it fullback right now. Burnett on the sidelines. This is Geist taking the toss. And he picks up the first down and then some down to the 17-yard line. So the old uh, lead play works 16 yards as we go down to Quinn. Athletic trainers and doctors down here doing stability tests to the left knee of J.D. Moore, their fullback. One of their most valuable blockers on this team. In fact, after the Auburn game, it was Fournette who gave his MVP award to that fullback. Let's see if Cam Cameron is forced to change some of their personnel groupings with their number one fullback on the Pines. Yeah, he's an important part, Quint. First down and 10. Fournette's still on the sidelines. Dice gets the carry. And he stopped up almost immediately. How does it change things now for offensive coordinator Cam Cameron? Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that Fournette is just now coming back in. He had been out since Moore was hurt. He and Moore are close. That's his guy. That's his blocker. And I think he was probably a little bit affected by that injury as well. And they gave him a couple plays to kind of gather himself, get back. This is the first time Fournette's been back on the field since Moore got hurt. Interesting. It's kind of tough when you see yeah. that guy that close to you go down like that. That's huh? his buddy. That's his running mate. Second down and nine. Fournette back in time. Got a nice block and sprung loose by William Clapp, the center. And it's first and goal for Ned all the way down to the one. Six one, six feet tall, 230 pounds, and a stiff arm. That is gorgeous. That is a gorgeous stiff arm. He actually was pushed out of bounds after a gain of 11 down to about the four where they spotted. Those offensive linemen are hunting linebackers today, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> You hunt linebackers, a guy like Fournette gets to that second level, he's gone. They run it. Touchdown, Tigers. Darrell Williams doing the honors. Williams with his first rushing touchdown of the season in the fourth of his career. As LSU rolls up its sleeves and plays a little smash ball to go up seven to three. A little smash ball in Vincent. That offensive line just smashed them back into the end zone. For LSU scoring a moment ago. Rod, what was the key variable on that last play? Well, it's that offensive line. They're fantastic. Watch the double team here that you get from post 77 and clap 64. Great job opening that hole. Alexander gets one, and you see the rest of it there. It's a clean, wide open for Williams to just kind of walk on in. Mm. down four yards deep as we go back to the studio and Adnan Verk. Thank you, Jonesy. Dr. Pepper championship drive update. Michigan and Northwestern right off the hop. Opening kickoff, it's J.U. Chesson. 96 yards to the touchdown. Northwestern leads the FBS in scoring defense, allowing only seven a game, but already it's 14-0 for the Wolverines. Jonesy? All right, thanks a lot. Adnan, we're here at Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, home game for the University of South Carolina, technically against LSU. I'm Mark Jones, alongside Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kessinick. This football game moved from South Carolina to Columbia earlier this week due to the massive flooding that has been beleaguering that area over the last week. Our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to the people of that region. 
First and ten for the Gamecocks and a nice run by David Williams close to the first down. You know, Jonesy, we should note that none of the South Carolina players were actually affected. They didn't have their living quarters affected. But many of them have family and friends who were affected. None of the coaches were seriously affected. A couple of coaches had some minor flooding, they said, in their homes. But by and large, the team was okay. The community devastated. First and ten. Into a tight window complete to Farrell Cooper, brought down immediately by Kendall Beckwith, a gain of three on the play, and further to that point about what this Gamecock team has been through this week. Classes were canceled for the week in Columbia, but the players, it's not like they get a chance to practice the entire day because there's still the mandated number of hours that they're held to by the NCAA rules. And you don't know how this affected any individual player. Everybody is different, and some folks were more distracted than others. And now a Wildcat formation with Farrell Cooper lining up to take the snap. Cooper keeps it and is brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. No gain on the play. Beckwith once again, and it was a total team effort in the truest and literal sense of the word as the football team got out into the community to help giving out water and other essential supplies to people in the various neighborhoods in and around the state to help provide what little comfort they could. You mentioned water. I don't think a lot of people realize that that they were struggling to find portable water. Yeah. Now, there are other sites discussed to play this football game at, notably Charlotte, Jacksonville, Atlanta. Pass complete, but short of the first down at the 44-yard line. Shamir Jeffrey picking up five on the catch, but it's going to be fourth down coming up. Let's go downstairs to Quint. Yeah, Coach Spurrier asking his assistant coaches actually to clean out their lockers and grab all their old Gamecock gear and donating that to the American Red Cross. Uh, the team went through 98 cases of water this week. Uh, the top water on campus was not drinkable. They're going to go for it here, Quint, on fourth and two. The six of eight on fourth down so far this year. Six on the play clock. Orth, incomplete, not even close. And LSU will take over on downs. Farrell Cooper was the closest player to that pass. Well, tonight on ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hilton, has Arkansas taking on number eight Alabama at 7 Eastern, then at 10 in the Pac-12. A good battle between number 23 Cal and number five Utah. Game day at Utah, but back to that earlier game. We saw Arkansas last week, Rod. You talk about smash mouth football with Alec Collins, and they line up and smash you some. Yeah, yeah, they bring it. Alex, Alex Collins and that offensive line, the biggest offensive line in football, <laughs> college or pro. Uh, that'll be nice, but I think Alabama has kind of kind of found their rhythm back. And, uh, so many people had written Alabama's obituary going into that game last week at Georgia. Came away with the win for net on the toss. Changes his mind, reversing field as only he can, but he's brought down at the 44. Let's go down to Quint for more on that Arkansas game. Yeah, we had the opportunity to watch the Razorbacks last week winning in Knoxville. I thought they were a little banged up at the end of that game. Alex Collins, minor ankle injury. He didn't practice on Tuesday. Wide receiver Drew Morgan dislocated his shoulder in that game. He will play. But you guys mentioned it, that Arkansas offensive line averages 328 pounds going face-to-face -face with an Alabama front four that is uh, NFL-ready. That mm. is quite a matchup. That one tonight on ESPN, second down and 11. Harris over the middle, wide open. Down to the 35, good catch and run by Doral. And he's just about a yard shy, or a little bit less from a first down. I'm a little surprised that Spurrier did take that fourth down gamble. Why? Well, 7-3 to three in the first quarter. You, you showed you could move the ball the first drive. And to give LSU such a potent team, the number seven team in the country, a short field early in the ball game, that's risky. If this results in a touchdown, it's... That's a tough, tough deal early to put your team behind like that. A good point. And uh, Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator for LSU, pretty much expected anything and everything from Spurrier. Gornett stopped up. 
Not sure that he got enough. That's going to be real close. Let's see where they spot this. You got Leonard Fournette in the backfield. I'm not so sure that even if you are short, you just go for it anyway. Oh, you do. Absolutely. They're going to bring in the chains and measure to see if he got enough. You're in that no man's land where you can't be certain that if you punt it, you'll actually get it inside the, the 15 or 20 like you'd like. And it's a long field goal, so you go for it on fourth down here. Fournette had 228 yards rushing against Auburn, 261 against Syracuse, and then 242 last week against Eastern Michigan. They are that much short of the first down. No doubt. LSU hasn't gone for it on fourth down yet this year. Yeah, well. That mid position, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you got a guy that's getting you nine on first down, you don't get a lot of fourth and ones. <laughs> that's where stats can be a little bit misleading. Fourth and one, or less than one, actually. J.D. Moore not leading the way at fullback. They give it to the first man through. That's Darrell Williams who picks up the first down. Remember, if you're just joining us, J.D. Moore was shaken up a little bit earlier. They were looking at that left knee of his. Tigers pick up the first down. Jonesy, the South Carolina game plan, really defensively, has been, hey, anybody but Fournette, don't let number seven beat you. So if you got to load the box with eight guys, you got to bring run blitzes, do that. Make the quarterback, number six, Harris, make him show that he can consistently throw the ball down the field. That's the game plan. Load it up now on first down. Let's see if Harris can deliver a good pass on first down. They're going to call a timeout with the play clock running out timeout. on them almost. LSU. 13 Three seconds, seconds to go Short here in the first quarter. The and LSU leading 7 to 3. We're going to take a short timeout along with them. Come back to Baton Rouge right after this. Tomcat kills mice fast. What will we do with all of these dead mice? Presenting the ball to make a difference for teachers and their students. Go to collegefootballplayoff.com. First down and 10 for LSU. Les Miles trying to get his team to avoid some of the lethargic lapses they've had in the last couple of weeks, in particular last week against Eastern Michigan. They fake the fly sweep. Fournette going east way and west, and that's good news for the Gamecock defense yeah. rod. Yeah, that, that's the way you want him. You want the one back set. You want them to send him toward the sideline, east, west, zone read stuff, because he doesn't have a Superman powers there. <laughs> and he doesn't have more the lead blocker. When they go one back, that's the better chance you have of stopping the LSU offense, in my opinion, a lot harder when they've got the fullback. Right, so it's just a better opportunity, but not quite kryptonite for Superman, right? True. Okay. Because that is number seven. Repping the seventh ward, where he's from, his block in New Orleans. On this unique Saturday, the second one in October, South Carolina in LSU wearing the home whites, but then the guest became a little discourteous. And welcome back, everyone, to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on this second Saturday in October, underscored by its unique circumstances. South Carolina displaced by the massive flooding this week in and around the state, playing a home game here at LSU. The Tigers with the lead as we begin the second quarter. Harris going to pass. Threw it low, intended for Traven Doral. Not your typical SEC crowd here today. Moving this game, not many folks had sufficient time to purchase tickets and obviously folks from South Carolina a lot going on down there you couldn't expect folks to show up for this ball game yeah, ourselves we didn't find out until midweek where exactly we were going to go anyway trying to trying to get through to ESPN travel was a little bit of a, a chore this week third down and 14 Harris Fires high, and that passing game yet to click consistently for the Tigers, something that we brought up a little bit earlier, intended for Fournette. Well, usually you see RVs lining the entire area. This is what the parking lot looked like, unusually empty. Usually 102,000 folks in this stadium. 
less than half that today. But South Carolina will take it. They've, they've done a nice job defensively. Fournette only 17 yards so far on seven carries, a long of 11. So I think they'll be pleased so far with the defensive effort they've had in this ball game. What is it about their scheme that's worked so far for them? Eight men in the box really forced LSU to think about throwing it. Good open field tackling. They have a game to. on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. They haven't tried to front up, go head to head with Fournette. They've really done a good job of tackling him, both gang tackling. Jimmy Keen into punt. He's getting right at midfield. Trying to put this one inside the 10 yard line, but it's going to carry into the end zone. And come back out. Let's go back to Adnan in the studio. What's good? All right, thank you very much, Jonesy. Georgia has won five straight meetings versus Tennessee. This is Jalen Hurd fumbling inside the five. And what a predicament. Geo Leonard Floyd is going to go all the way to the house. Fans in Knoxville aren't going to like that. Right now, it's Bulldogs leading it seven to nothing. Mark? Wow, you talk Ooh. about a crazy swing there. As we look at the numbers on Leonard Fournette, the 17 yards rushing, but uh, he has the type of unpredictable talent he can break out at any moment. Yeah, but that's why eventually LSU will need Brandon Harris to make plays down the field. David Williams in a tailback for South Carolina. We haven't seen much, if any, of Brandon Wiles. He hasn't gotten onto the field yet. This is Williams on the carry. Straight ahead out near the 25-yard line. Brandon Wiles, number 22, was to have returned this week after missing the previous two games with a rib injury. But so far, the starting quarterback, Perry Orris, making do with David Williams. Let's go down to Quint. You guys mentioned Farrell Cooper, 11 and white. He is the Swiss Army knife, as Rod called him. He's got nearly six touches already in this ballgame. He's been targeted three other times. He's in the slot right now, 11. They decide to hand it off to Williams again. And it'll be third down coming up after that gain of one. Lewis Neal making the stop. Hey, Quinn, I wonder if you're feeling down there what I'm feeling up here in the sense of this is kind of South Carolina's M.O. This is working okay. They've handled Fournette. They've moved the ball a little bit. And the crowd hasn't really been a factor for them. Yeah, short passing game. Steve Spurrier emphasized with us high percentage throws, chewing up the clock. And Orb does just that, but it's and, broken up, Quint. Yeah, and Rod, and Rod, from field level, the tackling stands out. I mean, we've watched a ton of tape on Leonard Fournette this season. Just freight training, guys. Whether it's his quickness, speed, or power, this South Carolina team has come with a tackling mentality. Very impressive from field level. Yeah, I, I agree. And they've been mentally tough. You know, Spurrier dodged that bullet of not... Uh, Com, uh, converting that fourth down in one situation. LSU did not get points out of it, so credit the defense for being mentally tough and hanging in there on that series. Kelly to punt. The Davius White on the fly and brought down immediately. Good open field tackling. It'll be first and ten for LSU after the 41-yard punt. Fournette trying to get on track when we come back coming at me I'm gonna get trucked okay so I want to be going in at an angle I want if your angles and I got your shoulders to the sideline I got a body I can go up here I can go down there but when you're coming at me oh I better go low well, so far whatever they've done has worked from a tackling standpoint first down and ten and Fournette gang tackled they talked about getting 11 guys to the ball well they got eight guys nine guys near the line of scrimmage <laughs> guys are getting off blocks and getting to him so this is working so far. The plan for South Carolina defensively has been a good one. So if you're LSU, is it just a matter of keeping the defense honest why you would not have his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage most times? Well, as opposed to just running them straight ahead? Second down and six. Fournette again. Brought down, but a nice gain. Picked up seven. Yeah, Jonesy, I think if you're trying to deal with it, 
you know, LSU will keep running Fournette inside, but South Carolina wants to get them out of the two-back offense. Now, Harris can help by completing passes down the field and getting that eighth man out of the box and make them play with two deep safeties, but that hasn't happened yet. First down and 10. On the toss, Fournette. Boy, you talk about taking Fournette head on that time, Rod. That's exactly what you were talking about. Jordan Diggs, Jordan Diggs went low just as you demonstrated on me a moment ago with him coming straight at you. Well, I didn't talk to him this week, but <laughs> it's exactly what I would have told him that. There the shoulder straight at you. You cannot stand up when that truck is coming at you. You've got to get down. Wow. I don't know if you really win when you take him straight on like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lesser of the evils. Second down and three. Fournette pounding away off the left side of that offensive line behind Tahuma and Posick. Picked up a couple of yards. You know, partner, it wasn't easy hitting you upstairs. You've been in the weight room. I usually bit, call huh? for a stuntman when you start talking tackling, so. <laughs> You know, get that hazard pay this week. Third down and one coming up for LSU. LSU Tigers coming in undefeated at 4-0. South Carolina at 2-3. Les Miles' team, uh, number seven in the country, according to one poll, five in the other. And it with four consecutive runs on this drive. Make it five straight runs. Fournette keeps those legs moving, and his forward momentum will give him enough for that first down, just shy of the 45. Let, Rod, let's talk about LSU as a team. They're ranking a... You, you had them up at number one this week. Why? I think I was really frustrated with some of the other teams. Ohio mm -hmm. State, Michigan State, Baylor. Deservingly so. A little frustrated, yeah. so I shook it up a little bit, but there is a missing link with this L LSU team. It is the passing attack. I love their defense, love their quickness, love their rushing attack offensively, but it's the passing attack that is the missing link, and if they get that squared away, I'm not sure who could beat them. Right now, though, they're 123rd out of 127 FBS teams in the passing game. They handed off to Darrell Williams. And Williams brought down at the 42. It was interesting. We had these, well, not these two teams, but we had LSU in their bowl game last year against Notre Dame. And Brandon Harris wasn't the starting quarterback. It was Anthony Jennings at the time. But uh, Coach Miles talked about, and Coach Cameron talked about, Harris getting more reps and getting used to the nuances of the position and improving subsequent to that. Well, he needs more reps throwing the ball in games. Second and six, throwing. And incomplete through the hands of Malachi Dupree. They had five drops last week, Rod. And this one looked like it should have been caught. Well, there are a couple things. I mean, it's not all on Harris. This ball is thrown a little bit hard, and that makes a bit of a problem, but you got to come up with this one. But you see, that was a rocket, but Dupree's got to catch that ball. The five drops last week, but also you've got to have a little bit more, take a little bit off the ball. You've got time for it. It's Harris, a combination of things here. Harris is just four of nine. There he is, Geis in the backfield beside him on third down and six. Trying to make a play here. Good move in the open field for the first down. And tiptoes out of bounds at the 28. Man, the Gamecock defense had an opportunity to get off the field, but couldn't. You mentioned the drops last week, Jonesy. This is what we're talking about. You make a perfect throw, you got to have that. So it's not all on Harris. Here's another one. End zone, got to have that one. Wow. That's degree. You have to make those plays. Now, when they start making the catches... Harris will start making some softer throws on occasion, I think. And his anticipation, you know, throwing before the receiver makes his break, before the receiver is open, throwing him open. He'll learn to do more of that. Right now he's got him first down and 10. Geis hit on the handoff, and Harris loses his helmet, comes off, and uh, flag thrown on the play as a result. Well, if he ripped the helmet off, if, if that was ripped off by Moore, he will not have to come out.
See what the call is here. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 10. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They call number that against six, Sky Moore. The game. Yeah, that's on Sky Moore, and so Harris stays in the game because Moore was hit with the penalty for ripping the helmet off with the face mask penalty. And Moore is a key player, their leading tackler, and he's giving away, oh man, 80 pounds or so when he runs up against those linemen. He's only about 215 or so. And those linemen are coming out and hunting him down, hunting linebackers. Dice in the backfield. Mouton, the fullback, leading the way. Pass complete. Dice. His momentum took him towards the sidelines. They're going to mark this right at the 10 yard line. Jonathan Walton making the tackle for South Carolina. Fournette on the sidelines right now. Well, he shouldn't be. Not for long. No. <laughs> I mean, you're in the red zone here. If you don't have your money man in there now, LSU in the purple jerseys at home for one of the few times. Second down and eight. 11 play of the drive. On the fade in the end zone. Great touch, touchdown. Malachi Dupree, but there's a flag down at the 12. Well, he put touch on that ball. Let's see if it stands. Flag in the end zone and a flag at the line of scrimmage. But what a well-thrown yeah. ball by and, Harris. And he's had a couple touchdowns called back. Yeah. There are three fouls on the play. Pass interference on the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 77 on the offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 95 on the defense. Those penalties offset. The try will be attempted. Now you got the story. First touchdown, Malachi Dupree. The second one of the season, seventh of his career. He's one of the playmakers they're really trying to get untracked. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, he made a fantastic catch, but what an even better throw by Harris. You might have heard you, Rod Gilmore, talking about getting some touch on that football, because he laid that one right in the basket, right in his kitchen. Quickly for South Carolina Gamecocks. Playing here because of the massive flooding and our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to the people from the state of South Carolina. From the four, it's Fenton. But a nice scene, Fenton trying to take it home. Fenton on the loose. Gamecock Nation, how do you like that? Touchdown! <laughs> Ninety six yards and a dash. Jonesy, you talk about special teams and big plays and the things that you need when your offense is not explosive. Well, South Carolina just got one. Tremendous blocking right around the 20 yard line. And that hole opened up big. Rashad Fenton goes 96 yards, almost untouched for the touchdown, and that swings the momentum right back in the Gamecocks yard. And it's a 14 to 10 game. Yeah, raise your hands up if you hear me. Cal, Utah, tonight at 10 on ESPN. Back here at Baton Rouge, it is 14-10 after Rashad Fenton just 
went 96 yards. Take a look at this kick return, and lane integrity gets lost by LSU. They've got eight guys who are converging to the left side of the field. They lose their lane integrity, and then take a look at the lanes that open up over here. You've got a great lane that's going to open, and not many defenders there. It only takes a couple of blocks to spring it right there. Fenton sees it, and he is on his way. There is nobody there in position. Bad pursuit angles and great speed by Fenton. Untouched, his first career touchdown out of Carroll City, Florida, in the Miami area, as we go back to Bristol, Connecticut, and then Denver. Thank you very much, Mark. SEC action. Georgia taking on Tennessee. This is Grayson Lambert to Malcolm Mitchell. 28-yard touchdown pass, fourth touchdown of the season. It's Tennessee's largest depth of the year, now 14-3. We want to see more demos, though, of you and Rod, Mark. You know what, Adnan? I just hope that Rod doesn't have one of those flashbacks when we're doing those demos, because if he gets the flashbacks, yours truly could end up at emergency care. I don't know. You're pretty jacked up, man. I think you'd be all right. And for a nice run along the Mississippi River this morning. Great day here in Baton Rouge. Fournette in on first and ten, but boy, a great dart thrown to Malachi Dupree. Out to the 46-yard line, check that. It's Traven Doral for the first down. Well, Jonesy, that's what Harris has to do if you're going to open things up for Fournette. He has 12 carries for 38 yards. You're talking about a guy who's gone three straight weeks for more than 200. Having a subpar first half for him anyway. Fournette. Cross midfield, his forward progress going to be marked at the 49-yard line. You know, interesting story with him, and you probably heard it already before. The fact that he was offered a scholarship by Les Miles as a freshman in high school. That's the first ever in the history of the program. How about the parents who petitioned to keep him out of Pop Warner? Because <laughs> he was too aggressive. I think there's some deep coordinators yeah. who would sign a petition yeah. right now. Yeah, good, good try. <laughs> Second down and four. Mom and Dad, Luke and Lori, wonderful parents. Second and four. Testing that Gamecock rush defense again here. Fournette going to be stopped up short. We've seen that a lot frequently well, here today. Yeah, yeah, we have. It's the eight-man front. They get eight guys in the box here. You just see all those white shirts through the line of scrimmage. They get off their blocks. This is what Fournette is facing, and this is why Harris has to find a way to throw the football. That was the last play. Watch this right here. Look at all the white shirts. Mm. Guys getting off blocks at the line of scrimmage, making tackles, gang tackles. Too many guys at the line of scrimmage. Harris has to back them off. He's got to throw the football to get some more running room for Fournette. Yeah, they've got some talented receivers, too, with Dupree and Burrell. Third down and two. The toss straight ahead. Keeps their shoulders square. And then does he move the pile? He almost came out the back end of that scrum and picked up the first down. Chris Moody limiting the game to just five. I don't know if he limited it. He was, always, he was hanging on for the ride there. I've been in that position where you've come up to some big backs and you're hanging on, waiting for a teammate to help you out. Toughest back you ever tackled when you were DB at Stanford. Oh. I know there's a list. You talked about Marcus Allen a lot. Uh, you got Mar an injured player. Marcus That's Allen, Freeman McNeil, you, yeah. either one of them could run me over. Take yeah. your pick. That's uh, Gerald Hawkins, the starting left tackle. A little shaken up on the play. Yeah. About five and a half minutes to go in the first half. We'll be back after this. Our new app will revolution his numbers. Yeah, Moore was shaken up earlier with a knee. KJ Malone coming into the ball game for Hawkins, and he's going to block for number seven there, Fournette, who has had an uncharacteristically lower than average first half. Be at the bar is set really high. This is his second reception of the ball game. A couple of flags down in the play. Fournette brought down to the 38. Mouton was out there trying to block for him. A little bit of chatter now on the six-yard gain and after the gain. 
Fournette very much a leader of this LSU team and known for his humility. Talked about him giving his player of the week honor to J.D. Moore, his fullback. Did the same a couple of years ago in high school when he gave his high school state player of the year award to a rival. He is a tough guy, mm. but appreciates his teammates. There is no foul on the play for defensive pass interference. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. However, we do have a block in the back, number 47 on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards. Replay, first down. That's against Bry Keith and Mouton. Well, Jonesy, a couple of things here. You see this play here with the block in the back right there. That was Mouton. But the, the big thing here is really noting Fournette in that he's been bottled up inside. So now LSU, they're looking at ways to try to get him the ball, get him in space, get him on track. He has 49 yards on 15 rushes. One catch for nine yards. And we're in a four-point ball game. A lot of frustration for LSU right now. LSU ranked number seven. Harris had it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. They're going to rule it incomplete. Gerald Dixon Jr. was there to make contact and knock the ball out of his arm. You know, talking to Lorenzo Ward, the co-D coordinator for South Carolina before the game, he said he wanted to see if number six could win the game. He knows number seven, Fournette, can. He wants to see if six can do it, and he wants to frustrate LSU. He wants them thinking about, have you given Fournette the ball enough? Our offense isn't moving. He wants that mentality for the LSU offense, and his defense is creating it right now. Right now it's Geis in the ball game, and he takes... Well, he doesn't take the carry as Harris keeps it himself on the fake and falls down at the 47-yard line, picks up six. Let's go downstairs to Quint for more. Rod, you mentioned frustration. I, I don't quite sense that yet. You know, this game's had a different feeling with, with the fans here. It's kind of a sedate compared to what typically is. But from this team, it's kind of like they're in the right lane on the highway, driving the speed limit. You know, just kind of doing what's necessary. You know, not, not willing to swing out in that left lane and, and, and hit the gas. Mm. Not, not going ultra slow either, but just kind of just driving the speed limit. What you, nice and safe. Yeah, what do you make of the impact of the loss of Moore and Hawkins for them now? Long term, it could be huge. Third and 13, passing situation complete. That's going to be short of the first down by a couple yards. Good catch by Deshaun Smith. And they're in that area of the field, fourth down, where maybe you think about it a little bit, especially a guy with a proclivity to take risk and gamble like Les Miles has in the past. Yeah, I would think that you would go here. Now, the issue is that South Carolina has done a pretty good job against your rushing attack. But I don't think that will keep Les Miles from going ahead and taking this on fourth down. And he believes in his offense. He really likes this team. He, he's not going to back away from a challenge trying to pick up a yard or two. They line up out of the eye. Fournette is on the sidelines. Williams in the backfield dotting the eye formation. And a flag down. Delay of game on the offense, number six. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Boy, that changes the equation a little bit. You know, Leonard Fournette even said that last week during Eastern Michigan week, they were a little bit too lighthearted. They were joking around a little bit in practice and said that coming into this week that they were putting their serious hats on, so to speak, and, and, and kind of maintaining and staying on point. But so far, South Carolina has negated all that. Well, keep in mind, LSU had slow starts against Eastern Michigan, against Syracuse. And it was the third quarter in which LSU kind of turned it on. The team punt bounces at the one. And they may have gotten this down. And it's going to be a touchback. Nope. It's going to come back out as we go back to Adnan in the studio. 
All right, Mark, thank you very much. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, a tough week for Charlie Strong as Texas have been off to the worst start since the Eisenhower administration, but a huge performance in the Longhorns today. Also, Nick Chubb injured will have the severity of that for the Georgia running back. And also, Michigan, one of the defenses of Michigan and Northwestern showed up in a big way. We'll tell you who. Joey Galloway, Danny Cannell, and me. Coming up. Right at Nan Isley. Place the ball at the 20-yard line. That was a close call. And down that punt right around the one-yard line. A surprisingly close game. South Carolina completing on first and 10 out to the 27-yard line to Farrow Cooper. One more look at that punt. Yeah, you know, Jonesy, it is the ball, not the player. As long as you are in the field of play, and it looks like he is, you can do that. Hmm. It's the ball, not the player. And that ball uh, looked like he got his hands on it before. And give us right up the middle to Sean Carson. And a spirited run by Carson for the first down. A pickup of 10 with 2.14 to go. South Carolina with all three timeouts remaining. So in a pretty good situation here. Perry Orth making his second start of the season. Orth takes the snap and fires complete. A nice catch and run by Shamir Jeffrey. A missed tackle on the play by White. Precise passing by Orth. Short passes. Kind of keeping this defense off balance. Eight-yard gain, second and two. First down picked up by Sean Carson, the 5'8 senior. Well, interesting scenes when you're here in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. A wonder, little voodoo around these is parts. Is there something sometimes. else working for South Carolina? Kind of pregame, sprinkle a little imaginary dust. They're cooking up something special today, Rod. Spreading it around, letting it fall on the quarterbacks. <laughs> Orth. Let's see what he's cooked up here. Incomplete. In and out of the arms of Pharaoh Cooper. So whatever that little ceremony was, that ritual they went through, didn't work on that pass. But very interesting nonetheless. I think it's been working for him, though. Remember, <laughs> in his first start against Georgia, he was 6 of 17. He's been much better today. Down here in Louisiana, you can find somebody to put spells on people and stuff, you know. You think because it's a home game for South Carolina, <laughs> they found some of that? <laughs> Second and ten. Orth dangerously thrown. And picked off by John Battle. A great lunging effort by Battle to scoop up the interception. Jonesy, we talk about it all the time. The middle of the field is dark and full of terror. You have to be careful throwing over the middle. And when you have a tendency to throw high, as we mentioned about fourth before, that one gets batted up. And Battle makes a great catch. First warning. But just when it seemed like South Carolina was moving into field goal range, Ricky Jefferson might have tipped it a little bit, too. High throw over the middle. You cannot have high throws over the middle like that. They tip off, bounce off, and they usually wind up in the hands of the guys with the wrong colored jerseys. Yeah. LSU plus five in turnover margin. One of the top teams in the country in that category. Their sixth interception of the season. And Gerald Hawkins, who lift off a moment ago, back on the field. Pitch coming off the corner, and he got it off in time to number seven. Fournette. Harris hopped on that seven train a little bit late, but enough for a 15 yard gain. First and 10 for the Tigers, just shy of midfield at the 49. 111 to go here in the first half. LSU with one timeout remaining. Let's see how they manage this clock. Harris fires incomplete. He was looking at Fournette seemingly the entire time, Rod. Jones, you just want to go back to one thing. We were talking about that possible touchback mm -hmm. down there. 
Had a nice little note from Rogers Redding, who coordinates officials. Said from his perspective, that broke the plane. And when it does oh. break the plane, it is a touchback. So even if the player reaches into the end zone. Well, yeah, can't let it break the plane. So Ed lining up as a receiver here, split wide. Harris over the middle. Malachi Dupree, first and 10 at the 23. Well, the middle of the field didn't have a lot of dark terror that time, Rod, as he found an opening. 28-yard gain. Throw by Harris. Fearless. First and 10. Pass complete at the 20-yard line to Dupree again. Working well, against Al Harris Jr. Only two catches for Fournette before today and a concerted effort by LSU to find another way to get him involved since the rushing attack isn't working so much. Second and seven. Into the seam and almost picked off. A major collision involving three players, Dupree, Smith, going head to head there. Well, D.J. Smith had a chance to pick this off. Watch him come over from his free safety spot, go high, and he just couldn't hang on to it. But that was his football. He ran into teammate Rico McWilliams as well. Third and seven coming up. 24 seconds to go in the first half. Cornette lining up as a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Harris has some time. Caught at the 13-yard line by Johnson. Tyron Johnson, the freshman, with 16 seconds to go. You have time. You can down this. You have a timeout. You can run a point. You've got options here. He's going to down it. And spike it. It'll be second and 10 coming up. One timeout remaining. All at the 13. What do you make of Harris's uh, poise on this drive? I, I see some growth. I enjoy it. I, mm -hmm. I think this is the kind of thing he's needed to do. LSU's need to give him the opportunity, trust him, build some confidence. He's managing this. He's made a couple of really mm -hmm. good throws today. No Leonard Fournette on the field right now. Harris, meanwhile, 13 of 21 passing for 135 yards. Looking to swing it here. Pulls and throws that one wisely out of bounds. Good decision making. Don't take a sack. Don't take an unnecessary risk. Come back to play the next play. One more play than a field goal attempt, perhaps? Yeah, and he, he preserved that by throwing that ball away. Save some time, save the timeout save the possibility of one more play but for my money i'd like to have number seven on the field Third and ten. from the 12 yard line Tigers getting a battle here from south carolina in the first half harris and has to throw it away again so the gamecock defense any which way you look at it from here this is a win on this drive. The first half is a win, not just this drive. They've shut down Fournette. They prevented a touchdown there. They're going to be in position to, to have a shot in the second half of this ball game. You look at Fournette, 3.3 yard average, three catches. He came into the game with two catches for the year. So South Carolina has made LSU do something different to try to get Fournette into the ball game. 29 yards out. It's good. Trent Domang knocks it through to make it 17 to 10 at the end of the first half of play. A surprisingly competitive and close game. And Leonard Fournette held in check. Got to have the right ingredients like gumbo in these parts at Burke. Time for the Lexus halftime report. You just can't throw anything in the gumbo though at and call it gumbo. Now to the people of South Carolina for enduring the massive flooding during the course of the last week. Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore 
Quint Kessenick downstairs. He'll be joining us in just a bit. Big news of the first half, partner. Just 49 yards rushing by Leonard Fournette. But the good news is that his quarterback, Brendan Harris, has spread it around a lot to seven different receivers. I, I think you're right. Fournette had trouble after his fullback, J.D. Moore, went out. And Harris kind of picked up the slack. He's thrown more passes in the first half than he has in any game all year, 23. 13 of 23 in the first half, and this is, in a way, good for the LSU offense. They need to perfect their passing attack. They need to get better at throwing it. They've relied on Fournette so much this year. It's time for Harris to get involved, and they used him in the first half, but that man, I think he seems a little bit lost mm. without J.D. Moore, his lead blocker out there. As you mentioned, only 49 yards in the first half, and most of that, you know, was before Moore got banged up. Folks, if you missed Rod's tutorial on how to tackle Leonard Fournette and the physical demo. You can catch a copy of that online at Watch ESPN or Watch ESPN.com. Not sure that's what South Carolina was using in the first half, but whatever that he did schematic wise was working as South Carolina gets ready to kick off LSU to start with possession of the football here in the second half. Jackson. He's one of the faster members of that LSU team. There's a flag down right at the 20-yard line, though. Remember in LSU's game last week against Eastern Michigan, it was surprisingly close uh, in the second half. During the return, holding number 48 on the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. And they're going to bring it back. Well, Leonard Fournette, remember last week against Eastern Michigan, as I mentioned that game a moment ago, on the first play of the second half, he took it the distance on a handoff for a touchdown, and that kind of gave LSU a little bit more breathing room. We'll see if he can duplicate that same magic here. LSU looking to make it six consecutive wins against South Carolina. There's Fournette. And unlike the first play of the second half last week, where he went 80 yards for the touchdown, this time stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. And actually got a couple of yards, pardon me. Didn't you sort of expect Superman to come out of halftime with yeah. the cape on and go about 75 yards? He spoiled a lot of people, us included. Second and seven coming up. South Carolina trying to get back on track. 0-3 in SEC play. They started 0-3 in Steve Spurrier's first year in South Carolina. Here's Fournette coming downhill. Still on the loose. Number seven. Still upright. There's the magic we've been waiting for. A touchdown. So, Rod, he didn't do it on the first play of the second half. He waited to play. He still has the cape. What a tremendous block inside by his tight end coming across to make that happen. That was Colin Jeter, 81. Really opened up that lane inside, and you just don't catch this guy when he gets going. It is not football once he gets beyond that line of scrimmage. It's track and field. <laughs> As you said before, he's out there just running track. And unfortunately for the Gamecocks on this last play, all they saw was his shoe size, the bottom of his cleats. He's wearing a 12. Back after this. Defense on society really came about because 
not because I was self <laughs> Yeah. This one, this one's a tough one, folks. We'll get back to the answer. I think it goes back a few decades. Yes. And that clue won't help you, folks. Leonard Fournette went 87 yards for a touchdown. He went over 1,000 for the season in the process and 2,000 for his career. All in one quick dash. A little pooch kick. And that's going to be a win for South Carolina as they get it at the 32-yard line, first and 10. One more look at that touchdown run. Well, part one, the offensive line does its job on this power play. Watch as you get the kick out block and the block up filled by the guard number 64 clap now once all that happens it's time for Fournette to go to work and he works these two defenders perfectly a juke and speed shoulders squared toward the goal line and when that happens you're in trouble it's over nothing but exhaust fumes for the defenders after that 439 yards on the day in a blink Let's see what kind of response the Gamecocks have. On the fly sweep, Farrell Cooper trying to get to the edge, but Rod, that LSU defense, we watched them on tape all week. They are so quick, sideline to sideline. Speed, you just saw number 33, Adams, Jamal Adams, go from the middle of the field to the mm -hmm. sideline. Comes off the field, looks like he's got a little issue there. No school has more players in the NFL going back to opening day NFL rosters than LSU. LSU number one, University of Miami number two. Remember, you can see Miami tonight against Florida State. What was it coaches told us yesterday? Guys come here thinking about being able to start in the NFL, not get to the NFL. Second and 11. Pass is going to be incomplete at the 38-yard line as we go downstairs to Quinn. Steve Spurrier admitted to me that his offense is lacking rhythm right now. And we've watched LSU on defense enough to know this year. The only team that's really moved the ball well on them has been Mississippi State in the second half of that game through the air. I believe you need to have a sophisticated passing attack to attack this LSU defense. I think they're most vulnerable if you can air it out a bit. And right now, Clint, uh, not sure that they have that with North or Nunez. And Connor Mitch still on the shelf. Right down at the 35 is David Williams by Deion Jones. Good tackle, and I think Quint is right. You know, LSU loves to play man coverage on the back end. And if you've got a sophisticated passing attack with, with good receivers who can really battle man-to-man -man coverage, that's where you attack them. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of talent on that field as Kelly gets ready to punt here. But Jonesy? I can only think of one team in the SEC with a sophisticated passing attack right now. Texas A&M. It's a short list, isn't it? The punt out of bounds at the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 on the 45-yard punt. Let's get the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Leonard Fournette leading FBS in rushing. When was the last time an SEC back led FBS in single-season rush yards? If you had... John Dotley, you're the winner. 1949, I had no chance. <laughs> None whatsoever. That was uh, a different era. I mean, I might have gone Billy Cannon at LSU, yeah. but... Yeah, that was my closest guess, too. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Cornette. Ah! Stays on his feet, falls forward to gain about four. You talked about having a sophisticated passing attack to go against LSU's defense. While we're talking quarterbacks, Brandon Harris, Orth for South Carolina, those two today, Rod, you've said it, quarterback play down this year in this conference. I, I think that's right. I think once you get beyond Allen at a and really high-level quarterback play is, is hard to find. I mean, Greer seems to be coming on in Florida, but that's only been for a game. I, I don't know that there's great quarterback play in this conference. Haven't seen it. Second down and six. Oh, Harris with a nice completion there out near the 30 to Malachi Dupree working against Rico Williams. We're seeing improved play by Brandon Harris today. 
And if he continues to improve, that will help LSU in their, their bid to win the SEC because that is the missing component. And if they can air it out on a consistent basis, man, this offense really becomes Is steady. he ever going to get to sling it a lot, though, with number seven in the backfield? He doesn't have to sling it a lot. He just has to be able to be good in the clutch on third down passing situations in the red zone. Take a little pressure off. It's down in 10 from just outside the 30. In a bootleg action, Harris flagged down. A pass caught at the 48-yard line by Trey Quinn, his first catch of the day, but will it stand? 17-yard gain, but the officials huddling back at the 29-yard line. Well, if we're going to talk about the lack of proficient quarterback play, we must add, conversely, that it's been a heck of a year for running backs in this conference as we get the call here from the official. Illegal shift, number eight on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. When you look at Fournette and Chubbs, who was injured, and it's Collins at Arkansas. You're the running back. Uh, uh, we may be seeing a, a transition from a quarterback-heavy Heisman campaign to a more balanced campaign with multiple running backs on the list this year. First down and 15 after the penalty. Fournette straight ahead. Most of the 35. Man, Rod, he takes some blows, though. And he gives some blows. <laughs> I mean, when he's running with the football, it is falling forward, shoulders lowered, right arm. Now, he's got the ball in the left arm, right arm. Watch the left arm. He's going to give a blow. He's throwing blows. Yeah. He's not just receiving hits. He runs with attitude. He runs very aggressively. Eight-yard gain for Fournette. Here he is again. Out near the first down at the 41-yard line. Picked up seven downstairs to Quint. Mark, he is a powerful young man. Uh, to see him in person up close, you know, you watch him on tape, whether it was high school last year as a freshman or, or this year, I have never seen him lose the one-on-one -on -one battle. He and the defender, he is always winning that battle and always falling forward. You know, uh, Quint, we were looking at him before the game and sizing him up, and I don't think he's quite as tall as Bo Jackson, maybe not as tall as Herschel Walker, uh, but certainly built like those guys. And I think Earl Campbell is, is a more apt comparison for size, but not with speed and quick, quickness. You have an injured player down on the field for South Carolina. That's Isaiah Johnson. He is, look. He's down in the bottom of that, that pile, and it looks like he got it twisted a little bit, his knee. Counted about three different guys it took to bring down Fournette that time. You know, when we were speaking with Fournette, prior to the bowl game against Notre Dame last year when we spoke with him, Rod. He had one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. Someone asked him about being fatigued with all the carries. He says, I don't get tired. I sweat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think right now that, that South Carolina defense is the one that I'd be concerned about getting fatigued. They, they played 48 snaps in the first half. And at some point, this worries on you. You can't play that many snaps against this defense, this offense. Momentary fumble by Harris. And he wisely steps out of bounds with it. That's going to be a loss, though, back to the 38-yard line. D.J. Smith there to run him out of bounds. They'll lose three. Bad snap. Good job by Harris to just get his hands on it. A little wide right. And speaking of wide right, who do you like tonight? Florida State of Miami. I like Florida State. Mm. I, I, Miami, to me, is, is still kind of inconsistent and struggling, and I think Everett Golson is getting it going at Florida State. Well, so you might see a banner or two flying above oh. the stadium tonight. <laughs> Second and 13, flags down, a little motion up front. Full start, 75 offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's against Tahuma. Talked about it. Here it is, Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo tonight. Miami trying to snap that five-game losing streak against Florida State. We saw the Hurricanes against Nebraska a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Brad Kyle was really yeah. fantastic slinging that ball around, even though it came down to the 
dying seconds. You know what else is fantastic? You know, you mentioned those planes. How about, <laughs> how about folks trying to get a GoFundMe what campaign? About that? Florida State people. Yeah. Saying that fly more banners. They want to keep Al Golden in place in Tallahassee. Nice move by Dice. Got a nice block on the edge. Dice out near the first down. And a slick run as DJ Smith finally pushes him out of bounds, but not before he picked up 17. Change of pace kind of guy. He, he changes direction very quick. A little different style runner than Fournette, so another weapon to the arsenal. Look at that stable of guys there. Yeah, they're loaded back there. Well, Fournette a sophomore, uh, Williams a sophomore, Geis a freshman. Get to the first man through, that's Williams. Rod, well, tell me about the fact, if you're a running back coming out of high school right now, or if you're a receiver, what are your prospects of going to LSU, albeit they've got great talent that gets you ready for the NFL, if number seven is there? How does that affect your decision? I think most, most high school running backs will figure he'll be gone in a year. Okay. And that opens it up. But it, it is interesting, the receivers at LSU spoke about the few opportunities they've been getting and there's a little frustration there and cam cameron the old coordinator said you know what hey i don't mind <laughs> they should be hungry maybe they'll catch the ball first and ten a little play action harris is looking downfield pirouettes and then pile driven back at the 39 yard line by marquavius lewis nice sack on the play as south carolina's defense rises up not many receivers in the pattern that time, and Harris pulled the ball down and just couldn't get away. A third down now, and a second down, and a long, long way to go here. That was the tenth sack of the season. And you were mentioning the wide receivers, and Cam Cameron said, you know what, they're just divas. <laughs> second and 22. Little receiver screen. This is Johnson with nowhere to go, brought down at the 37. Well, do, do wide receivers kind of have a reputation for being a little uh, temperamental? You say diva. I'm trying to. I'm trying to dress it up a little bit. Well, yeah. I mean, as a former defensive back, I thought they were divas. <laughs> you know, gotta look pretty. You know, uh, don't hater, touch me. Hater alert. Hater alert. <laughs> hater alert. <laughs> Third and. Long to go. I will tell you this. They've got a stable of guys on this team at LSU that are really quick and really fast. But South Carolina has hung in there pretty pretty well with them this afternoon. Third and 24. Passing situation. Harris fires high. But caught at the other end. Miraculously. Touchdown Durrell. Deshaun Smith was the intended receiver. There he is, 89. But it was tipped right to Durrell. Always good to be in the right place at the right time, but always good to have your quarterback hang in there and take a shot. Now, who was in the wrong place? Was that Smith, 89, in the wrong place, and he tried to catch a ball he wasn't supposed to? Or was he overthrown? Oh. Don't worry about that on Sunday or Monday when they watch the film. For now, Doral with his first touchdown catch of the season. Tenth of his career. Sometimes, as they say, it's better to be lucky than good. Sometimes you're both. 31-10 when we come back. For South Carolina, due to the fact that this game was moved from Columbia because of the flood disaster they've been experiencing over the last eight days now in the state of South Carolina and all our thoughts and prayers go out to the people and the recovery effort and the relief effort. Gamecox with a kick bringing it out to the 35 yard line. You know we've seen the devastating images and heard the heartbreaking stories from the floods and the Carolinas all throughout the week. The Walt Disney Company, ESPN's parent company, makes a $1 million donation every year to proactively fund future disasters, so critical dollars are available as soon as those resources are needed, and ESPN committing additional funds to support the South Carolina Central Red Cross. 
So uh, we continue to hope for a recovery in that area. Well, our prayers. And the college football community certainly responded the right way. LSU, they went through it themselves 10 years ago with Katrina, and they stepped up to help out South Carolina. As did Vanderbilt. With. First down and 10. Orth going up top, a lot of contact. Caught! Whoa, the circus came to Tiger Stadium. Shamir Jeffrey made the catch, but there's a flag at the 40-yard line. Those guys were going, well, I guess you could say back and orth, Rod, <laughs> with the pushing. And there's a lot of contact down the sidelines between the receiver and the DB, Kevin Tolliver, the second. Here's the call. Pass interference on the defense, number two. Penalties decline. Result of the play, first down. You want to sing that as they go back and forth? Back and forth. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're locked up there pretty clean, clearly. And a great wow. one-handed catch. Foot down in bounds. Double check that. Yep, left foot down. A 22-yard gain on the play down to the 38. A little double reverse here to Cooper. Got a block in front of him, but he's run out of bounds just shy of the 30 at the 31-yard line and seven-yard gain on that play. Farrell Cooper, the all-conference selection first team preseason. Did plenty of Wildcat with him last year. Been moving him around a lot in this game. A couple of explosive plays by LSU have really put South Carolina in a bind. Their offense is not equipped to respond quickly. Second and three. And another flag thrown. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And pushes it back just outside the 35. South Carolina 2 and 3 overall coming in 0 and 3 in conference play and uh, the way things are going it's going to be real tough when you look ahead here's a double throw they set up and well underthrown Booger did not find his target I mean that wasn't even close well August was out there all he had to do was give it to Mayor and let him go run underneath him he probably didn't see him but you saw that graphic earlier, only 31, now 32 plays for South Carolina in the game, and that just really hurts the South Carolina defense. They've been on the field way too long, and that pounding rushing attack of LSU, I think, is, is wearing on them. Sean Carson in the backfield. Farrell Cooper, the inside receiver, the middle receiver at the top of your screen. Fourth fires behind his target. Incomplete intended for Jeffrey. Fourth down coming up. Well, the way things are going, I wouldn't be shocked if he went for it. Well, I think they have to go. I mean, given where they are and given the the time of the game and the score, you're at the 36-yard line. This is a very long field goal out of his comfort range, I would think. And not that a field goal would do you a lot of good. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down today. Trying to keep this drive alive right down the seam complete. Could be a score. Touchdown, Adams. And the Gamecocks with a big time response to close the margin. Gerald Adams, the 6 6 senior, an imposing target. Right down the seam. Nothing other than straight down the field, wide open. Adams came over a bit late, couldn't make the play, and look at there. South Carolina comes up with a big third down and gets a score. Look at a two-touchdown game now. Big fourth down they came up with. That was fourth and seven, fourth and eight. Adams, one of their leading receivers. That was his 13th of the year and his second touchdown. Big fella staying upright for the score. 
back up. A great answer to that last score by LSU by the Gamecocks. Adams right there with a touchdown catch and run to make it a 14-point game. South Carolina trying to snap a three-game conference losing streak, looking for their first conference win of the year. Much like they started in Spurrier's first year. And they were able to salvage the season. Well, tonight on ESPN, it's college football primetime presented by Hilton. Arkansas taking on number eight, Alabama. Then at 10, it's a Pac-12 tilt. Number 23, Cal taking on number five, Utah. Both games on ESPN and watch ESPN. I love Jared Goff, the quarterback at Cal. This is his opportunity, yeah. you know. Big time, big chance on a big stage to show he's worthy of Heisman consideration. Remember last year when we had Utah against UCLA? And Hunley was their big star, and UCLA uh, gave up 10 sacks wow. that night. Utah is capable defensively wow. of putting that on you. How much of this surprised you this year? I mean, it was all about Travis five, Wilson. Really? It was, if Wilson was going to play well, they were going to be a good team. Without that, and that's been their issue, quarterback play. First and 10. This is Geis. And Geis picks up about 14. You know what? Leonard Fournette seemingly has spent more time on the sidelines tonight, I think, than any other time that I've seen this year. I think that's right, and I'm not sure exactly why. You see the numbers. He had one really big run in the second half to really kind of boost his numbers up. He lost J.D. Moore, his fullback, and I think that affected LSU offensively in the first half. We've seen Geis a bit more, a change of pace, but Fournette has not been what we thought. There is more. And again, once he got banged up, Fournette came out for a few plays. First and ten. This is Geis again. Broke one tackle, but limited to a one-yard gain. Clock running with 4.20 to go here in the third quarter. And let's see you looking to remain perfect on the season. Moore is so important. I mean, the entire coaching staff has said all along, and, and Cam Cameron emphasized it yesterday, as did Miles. Hey, they need 44, the fullback. He is the guy that really makes so much go in their rushing attack, and he is a comfort guy for Fournette. He relies on his blocks. They have this way of communicating to each other that works really, really well. Former walk-on put on scholarship at the beginning of the season by Les Miles. From an LSU family, mom and dad both attended school here. On the handoff, nowhere to go for Geis, and then he escapes miraculously. Low, bobbing and weaving. He got his full swerve on. Geis is nice. Down to the 36-yard line. Rocking his little Odell Beckham do as well. This tackle by Griffin on the play. Watch the work he does here by himself. I mean, this play is going nowhere. How many tackles does he break? Make people miss? Three right there. There's another one. One more for good measure. Yep. Four missed tackles. He turns a loss into a nice game. Trying to tell Leonard, hey, Leonard, you can chill a little bit there. <laughs> I got you here. <laughs> Williams now in the ball game. Geis on the sidelines, getting a breather. Williams with a handoff, a gaping hole through that front. Down to the 28-yard line, Rob. You notice the other difference offensively. It's not a two-back set anymore for LSU. Once more went out of the game, there was much more of an emphasis on the one-back set for LSU. And for me personally, I think they're at their best when they use two backs, when they have a fullback in there. So clearly, they're not as comfortable in the one-back set, and they're running more of that now. No more, no two-back sets. A little smaller package maybe? Yep. more east-west running. Second and two, Williams again, and good running. Williams, touchdown LSU! Oh, and they're going to mark it at the one-yard line. Looked like he had gotten in. They're going to mark it at the one instead. Got a good block, though, Williams did from... Tyron Johnson for the 27-yard gain. Here's a look at it. Yep. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. Foot, left foot stepped out. Great, Great job by the officials. Yep. Right on it. Left foot right there. See if they give it to him here to get what he maybe could have gotten on the last play. Williams finishing the job for the score.
Tigers back up by three touchdowns. With less than two minutes to go in the third quarter, the running backs doing a lot of heavy lifting today. It's Maryland, and uh, the Buckeyes, Rod, you and I were talking about it, almost playing like a team that uh, lacks motivation and seems almost bored. Another little pooch kick down at the 39-yard line. Fielded cleanly by South Carolina. It'll be first down and 10 from there. Let's go down to Quint. Leonard Fournette, 100% healthy and fine. Just a spectator on that last drive as LSU, they flex their uh, depth muscles, basically, to throw Williams out there and Geis out there, and you're really starting to see fatigue set in on the South Carolina sideline. Poor angles, poor tackling, body punches from LSU all day have them right on the edge. I, I think you're right, Quint. 48 plays in the first half. We talked about that, wearing them out. 255 yards for LSU in the second half. Mm. This offense has to stay on the field to help the defense. Fourth. Throws a dart complete down to the 46-yard line. Matrick Belton. It'll be first down and 10. Nice gain. You know, Jonesy, you, you felt like in the first half, South Carolina defensively rallying to the football, tackling well. No big plays allowed in the third quarter. A lot of big plays. Just worn down. First down and 10. Ben Cox playing for themselves, but also uh, playing for an entire state today. They've had a very difficult time over the last week. Nice cutback move by Sean Carson. And I was uh, communicating with a good friend of mine, Frank Martin, the head coach of the Gamecock basketball team. He characterized it as a, a major, major disaster. And another friend of mine, uh, John Avery, in Clinton, South Carolina, a good friend of mine, said they've gotten an actual, another additional three, four inches of rain today. Well, and any way you want to spin it, it, it had to impact these players all week long. And second and seven complete. And a chance here. Cooper. Back at you. Touchdown, South Carolina. He beat Ricky Jefferson on the coverage. And for the second consecutive time, hey, the Gamecocks have answered a Tiger touchdown with one of their own. Well, we talked earlier about man coverage and a good passing attack and a good receiver challenging and beating man-to-man -man coverage. Cooper just did it. Harold Cooper, Rod, with his third touchdown of the season, the 13th of his career. And it's back to a two-touchdown game. You see the middle of the field, he beats Jackson right off the line of scrimmage, and then a move on the safety, Adams. Man-to-man -man coverage, press coverage at the line of scrimmage, beat it, hey. and then great speed. Hey, 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 you keep telling me the middle of the field is filled with darkness and terror. When you, when you have people there, terror there, you got to have people that's, in the middle. That's the fun zone, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you play man-to-man -man coverage, you don't have anybody in the middle of the field. <laughs> okay. There's your explanation. All right. But typically, the middle of the field is dark <laughs> and full of terror. <laughs> Be wary of it. Well, with 39 seconds to go in the third quarter, Cooper with 105 yards receiving today. That's his seventh game this year. Pardon me, in his career with over 100 yards receiving and courtesy of the pass from that guy Orth and you see Nunez there beside him he did not practice this week because of a shoulder injury and obviously not going today well and it's changed the focus of their offense they've gone from a quarterback running offense to a quarterback passing attack today with Orth throwing the ball around much more than South Carolina did when Nunez was the quarterback they try to go for the onside kick, and it's recovered by the kicker, Landon Ard. And it seems, to, yes, it has gone 10 yards. Wow, they caught LSU napping. Steve Spurrier rolls the dice. It's got to go 10. LSU not prepared, and it looked like it was the kicker 
who yeah. recovered. How about the yeah, way he, hard. he ran alongside it, just All waiting side. for it to get to the 10-yard mark? Five-yard penalty. We'll re-kick. Oh, now they're saying it was touched before it went the mandatory 10 yards, I think. Well, he was running alongside of it. Let's watch closely. Does Ard touch it? Did it hit him? He's awfully close to it. They called offsides on the play. That was the official call. So otherwise, uh, <laughs> executed pretty well by the kicker. That was a perfect kick. All for naught since someone was offside for South Carolina. Yeah. The official said offside on 24 white. So forced to kick it long, and this is Daryl Williams. And Williams out to the 33-yard line. A great opportunity momentarily for South Carolina. First and ten for the Tigers. Les Miles, the 2011 National Coach of the Year, won a national championship that year. Had a great visit with him yesterday at the LSU football offices. Miles, uh, because of the quirk in the change of venue, had a chance to go watch his son play football last night. And got another older son that actually is on scholarship playing football at North Carolina. Very athletic family. Mm. This is Dice. Oh, Dice looking good today. Into South Carolina territory. And a nice gain. He's had some huge holes to run through. He's done his work once he's gotten through them, but that offensive line can really underrate it. Really underrated. 20 yard pickup there, but he wasn't touched the first seven, eight yards. Seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. Look at that offensive line. Some big fellas up front. They run it again. 305, 327 pounds, 309, 303, 320 pounds across the front. The running backs got a lot of help. And we talk about that offensive line. Huge. Red beans and rice didn't miss those guys. Back for the fourth quarter. Third quarter. And Darius Geis getting a lot of touches here in the second half. And another spirited run down to the 37-yard line, close to another first down. Rod, when you look ahead to Florida next week as we look at an injured player down on the field for South Carolina, as number nine or 90, Taylor Stallworth, do, do you even think about easing back the throttle on Fournette with Florida next week? Well, I think you will at some point, but in a two-score game, not right now. And remember, you know, LSU likes to get him about 25 touches. He's at 23 today with 20 carries and three catches. So he's probably going to come back for a couple more touches. It is to Williams. Williams brought down by Jordan Diggs. I mean, it, it's a two-score game. So right now, you don't assume that this game is is on ice for LSU. LSU, because of the fact that they get to play this game here in Baton Rouge, will enjoy a nice long stretch of games at home. Williams still in the backfield beside quarterback Brandon Harris. Pass complete to Dupree. And a nice move on the edge. Malachi Dupree. Going to make it first and goal for the Tigers. Let's go to Adnan in the studio. All right, Jonesy, thank you very much. Up to you know what's happening with Georgia and Tennessee as all tears have stormed back. Joshua Dobbs here, and all of a sudden we're tied up at 24. Mark, back to you. Boy, Butch Jones could really use a break. How about that? How about uh, Tennessee not giving up, getting back in and taking a big lead away from somebody else after having blown 
three double-digit leads the last few weeks. And some of those in the fourth quarter. First down and goal. Dice in the ball game. They line up out of the eye. And a little motion up front. It was Kelsey Griffin encroaching. How about the job this LSU offensive line has done today? Offside, defense, number 94. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Still first down. You mentioned the yards that Fournette has already. How about Geis? Geis has also chimed in. He's at 102 yards on nine carries. So this offensive line, and we talked about them at the very beginning of the show. They have two freshmen up front. Wow. This mile certainly doesn't lack for talent. First and goal. Geis and Mouton lining up out of the eye. It's going to be Geis straight ahead. Touchdown, LSU. Partner, watch this hole on the right side that the offensive line creates. Pull the guard, kick out block. I, I think I could get through that. <laughs> I think we both can get through that hole. That offensive line just wearing out South Carolina in the second half. Dice now over 100 yards rushing with 106. The lead back up to 21. Back to Baton Rouge after this. Who's the hottie? Who's the... Oh, he told him not to honk. Where are you headed? Just out. What the... French fries. Not in my house, young lady. Dad. Oh. There's just no stopping true love. Chicken fries are back at Burger King. A little mystery can go a long way. I suggest you have it lead back to your place. Stay thirsty, my friends. Enter the Allstate It's Good Sweepstakes each week for a chance to win dozens of great prizes throughout the college football season. One lucky fan will win $100,000 a trip to the Allstate Sugar Bowl and then meet Kirk Herbstreit at the 2016 National Championship game. It's good! Enter today at AllstateCFB.com. I said, better son. Hi, I'm Andrew Luck. Could anyone use some of my lucky beard for retirement? I could use some luck. Make a wish. Nice. Thanks. Your turn. No, thanks, Andrew. See, TD Ameritrade has everything I need for retirement, like rollover mm -hmm. consultants for assistance and portfolio planning tools to help me manage my IRA. So I think I'm good. Oh, well. Luck is in the air. Um. TD Ameritrade, you've got this. Cheese it grooves are the best of both worlds, like a cheese it and a chip. Oh, you just put them together. Yes. Closer. Closer. They're kissing. <laughs> we take time for our cheese to mature in our crispy cheesy grooves. This autumn, leaves aren't the only things falling. During the Echo National Sales Event, get this shredding back for under 200 bucks. This handheld blower for $149.99. Or this backpack blower for less than $300. But hurry, these deals won't last. <laughs> The stock market ended down sharply today despite getting off to a strong start early in the morning. Asian markets all ended the day with modest gains, with markets in China spiking 2.8%. The energy sector experienced a day of sharp drops as lower oil prices took their toll on the commodity sensitive sector. The energy sector is now down. How's it? Neil Leverett here along with Stan the Man, or dare I say, the Stan Animal. Don't ever call it. <laughs> Now let's take a look at winning traditions driven by Goodyear. Mike the Tiger, the live LSU mascot since 1935. He is a mainstay at home games. Unfortunately for him, today is considered a road game, so SEC rules prohibit a live mascot from being in this contest. He's busy putting down his 25 pounds of meat a day. Mark and Rod, how do we sneak a 500-pound tiger into the stadium for this football game? Dress, dress him up like that. <laughs> tell you one thing, you won't get any help from me. No, no, you're on your own, Q. <laughs> you are on your own. I would have liked to have seen the tiger in the ballpark today. Fenton, who ran one back for a touchdown earlier, this time 
stopped up at about the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at today's AT&T strong performance. Well, that strong performance is really on the LSU side. The running backs have done a tremendous job. Fournette, obviously, with a huge run early in the third quarter of this ball game. How about a little help inside? Darrell Williams, big rushing attack, and also Geis over 100 yards as well today. The running backs for LSU have had a very strong performance mm -hmm. today. First down and 10. Well, South Carolina has been able to respond to each touchdown. Well, they did in the third quarter. This pass too high, incomplete, intended for DJ Neal. And Orth took a shot. Remember, if you're just joining us, Perry Orth got the start today, his second start of the season. Well, and he's played pretty well. He's played much better than he did in his first start against Georgia, replacing that man right there, Nunez. He's got a bad shoulder. And I think in general, you have to you have to acknowledge the fact that the South Carolina players have played hard and generally have played pretty well, just giving up a whole lot of big plays in the second half. Worth is 13 to 26 for 195 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Gonna take off here and you see some of that LSU defensive speed, Jamal Adams. The strong safety running him down to make the tackle on the play. This is a school that has never lacked for players with a lot of speed. I think about uh, Trendon Holiday, the former kickoff and punt returner here, former world class sprinter, actually ran a 1001 in the 100 meters as a member of the NCAA championship track team here. Third and two. Nice cutback move by Williams, and Williams with a first down at the 41. There will be a huge ball game next week for LSU. Surprisingly, Florida, Florida has become a thing. They've worked out their quarterbacking deal, huh? Apparently. You knew they had a good defense coming into the yeah. season. The question was, could they do enough offensively? First down and 10, out of the backfield, complete. Williams again, nice move. And got about six. Here's a look at that Tiger schedule coming up. Next week, they'll take on Florida, who opened up a lot of eyes with that win in the swamp against Ole Miss. Yeah, and then take a look at how they end things here. Alabama, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Texas A&M. Whoa. That is a physical deal they've got. Week after week after week, very physical teams at Alabama, Arkansas, Ole Miss defensively, and then A&M has really grown defensively, so the finish of it is tough. They get some games at home, and that's, yeah. that's the good thing for LSU. They get a nice long stretch of games over there at home. The give us to Carson, who keeps it himself across the field, and brought down right near that first down marker. The interesting to note about that schedule, though, they've got, LSU has Western Kentucky, a bye, and then Alabama, how much does it help them the bye week and an, an, uh, an opponent that isn't a, an SEC opponent? Well, add to that the unexpected home game today. Extra time. They don't have to be out there traveling and whatnot. They've got their routine. They're here. So they've had a stretch, or they will have a stretch of three weeks or so, including the bye. That works out pretty well for them to be rested and ready for Alabama. They're that much short of the first down. 11.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. What about the future for Steve Spurrier? Yeah, a tough year this year so far. 0-3 start in conference play, and we tried to add up, you know, six, seven wins. It's going to be tough right now tough. for South Carolina. Tough. You know, and there was, there was a lot of talk about Spurrier considering retiring last season, last offseason. That ended. He's back, and people still wonder how much longer he'll be around, and all he says is, hey, I'm... I'm enjoying it. I'm not going anywhere. But this has to be a tough year. He expected this year to be much better. Young quarterback and Nunez and Connor Mitch was injured early against Kentucky. Nunez, a true freshman. Orth takes the snap and lunges for the first down. 
Connor Mitch started the season got the win against North Carolina then was shaken up against Kentucky suffering a shoulder injury and then or started the Georgia game they lost 52 to 20 he struggled 6 of 17 Nunez got the previous two starts and then hurt his shoulder against Missouri forcing Orth to come back in and mop that one up and that brought us to today. down to the 45 yard line by Sean Carson but this is a South Carolina offense rod that is just right now anyway devoid of that that big play dynamic two or three or four guys that can, can make it happen I mean it, Cooper is the one guy it all. Yeah, yeah it's Cooper he's the one guy and the other part of that though Jonesy is they can't control the ball and that leaves their defense on the field too much their defense played 48 plays in the first half of wow. this game yeah. it is no accident that in the third quarter they gave up a lot of big plays. Orth with time. And now forced to throw it out of bounds. A little bit of heat coming his way from Arden Key, the true freshman, and really one of the best pass rushers right there, number 49 on your screen for LSU. Young man out of Atlanta, Georgia, 6'6", 230. Pass rushing specialist right now. Wait until he grows up. <laughs> Wait until he is full grown. But he has a very quick first step as a pass rusher. He's very athletic, very long, and he's just a pup. Third and seven. Or oh, a Back at the 48 yard line. Lewis Neal with his fourth sack of the season. And it's fourth down coming up for South Carolina. This is a defense that was not really aggressive and didn't make a lot of sacks last season. This year, that's changed. Better pass rush from the outside with some help from the man we talked about, Adams, but that time it was on the other side. Good job up front. Lewis Neal, 92, getting that sack. Arden Key, 49, on the opposite side. John Kelly with his third punt of the day. They're going to get a chance to down this inside the five. Well done by Kelly. He's averaging almost 42 yards per punt. It's not all Fournette all the time. This defense writing its name and signing off on this game. Our new app will revolutionize car service. Well, that's not the real Mike the Tiger, but a reasonable facsimile as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com with 8.33 to go here in the fourth quarter. LSU comfortably ahead, and Leonard Fournette on the sidelines. Microsoft got in the eye. And the ball came loose. They put it on the ground, and Gerald Hawkins recovering it for LSU. Back to Adnan in the studio, who always has sure hands. Oh, I appreciate it, Jones. You know, you know how we do. Georgia and Tennessee, it was 24-3 Georgia. A minute left in the second quarter, and here they come. Dobbs to Kamara, 31-24 volunteers. Back to you. Boy, like we said, Butch is trying to flip the script on those end-game situations for Tennessee. Asking the fans how you like me now, huh? Yeah. They've been tough on him, but uh, win today against Georgia would endear him to the faithful, the Vol Nation. Second down and four. Dice hitting the edge and hitting it good. Dice. The turbo kicked in and he makes it out to midfield before Isaiah Johnson finally pushes him out of bounds. What a nice added dimension he brings that will help LSU. Not just today, down the line. Great quickness, great speed, change of direction. A little different than Fournette, not as big as Fournette. A guy who can really kill you in space. Recognized as a leader 
with these guys. These these are serious players, but you know you know this. Players respect players who can play. Yes. When you can play, you can get their attention and their respect. Williams in the backfield takes the handoff. Stopped up at about the 45-yard line. Yeah, Les Miles flagged down on the play. Les Miles had a chance to be at home for an extra week. And his wife, Kathy, was uh, heading up to North Carolina to visit their son that plays football up that way at University of North Carolina. His wife, Kathy, former basketball coach, collegiate basketball coach. Holding number 77 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay, second down. His daughter is a swimmer at the University of Texas. And son Manny, uh, as I mentioned, a football player. Ben is an H-back, a junior in high school, and uh, Coach had a chance to hang out with him last night as a perk of the change in the schedule. Second and 12. Pass complete to Dupree, who was brought down immediately at the 43-yard line by Isaiah Johnson. You know, you mentioned earlier South Carolina and finding enough wins for a bowl game. That's going to be a challenge. Mm. I mean, their, their schedule is a tough one the rest of the way out. You take a look at what they have down the road there. Texas A&M, Tennessee, Florida, the Citadel, Clemson. I mean, what do you figure? You, you can pencil in maybe what? One win with the Citadel, maybe two yeah. with Vandy. The rest, who knows? Various guys running on third and 13. Unless you're going to punt here. Yeah, tough year for the Gamecocks. And I wouldn't even pencil in the Vandy game as, as a win. Yeah. That, that's a competitive game there. Yeah. The you good know. news is they played hard today. Their defense did a good job in the first half, and you saw some growth with Perry Orth right. at quarterback. He played much better today than he did against Georgia a couple weeks ago. What does it mean for them, Rod, if they get Nunez back, or even if Connor Mitch comes back? Is it is it at a point where things can be salvaged a little bit more? I think they'll get better. Some depth at quarterback. Two different styles. Gaines punt bouncing at the. 16-yard line where it's down. First and 10 coming back the other way for South Carolina. From a busy day in the Major League Baseball postseason, Sports Center at night on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. And I know that one Hugh Jones is upset that the Dodgers and Kershaw got beaten last night. A little bit of a surprise there. Skarnekia in a quarterback for South Carolina. And what about the Toronto Blue Jays down two games to nothing? Right out of the box. Stunning that home teams would uh, would drop two at home Man, in the playoffs. They gave up. The, gave up the crib. Look at the numbers on Skarnekia. 6'4 freshman. Lightly recruited. But then he impressed Spurrier at a uh, South Carolina camp, and all that's all it took. Pass complete. Out near the 25-yard line to Hayden Hurst. He is more of a drop-back passer. Folks around the program, as you take a look at Orth with some ice on his left calf, it looks like. Folks around the South Carolina program have talked glowingly about Skarnikia. His arm, ability, and Spurrier certainly impressed with them. And he, they wanted to get him in the game and get a look at him. Third and two for the game pass. Hand it off, and boy, I'm not sure that Sean Carson got enough for the first down. Interesting that we didn't see Brandon Wilds today, and he was scheduled, we were told, to play. He was healthy enough to play, but obviously not the case. Uh, South Carolina, barring a miraculous turnaround here, will fall to two and four on the season overall. And 0 and four 
in conference play. They're going to go for it on fourth and short. Skarnacki will fumble the snap. And the Tigers will take over on downs. Yeah, he didn't. He fumbled it forward, but didn't get it enough of it to pick up the first down. I think you're right. I think yeah. LSU comes back on the field, and while we have that moment as we take a look at this, just didn't get the snap. Yeah. Let me ask you this about Leonard Fournette. With all the talk about Clowney coming out early, should have come out early, should have just not played his junior year. We've heard some of that talk about Fournette. Miles Jack for UCLA got hurt and he's not coming back to UCLA for his senior year. What do you make of that? Yeah. Should, it, should a guy sit out? I don't know how you just shut it down. I mean, what do you do to maintain your football skill and, and your, your sustainability and, you know, just remain a football player? I mean, yeah. what, what do you do in the meantime? How do you replicate what you would do in a Eddie Jennings and a quarterback for LSU? Hands it off to guys. And let's get back to Fournette. Do you shut, how, do you, how do you shut him down for I, I don't think. Is that talk ludicrous? Yeah, I don't not? think he would do that. But I think at some point we will see a running back who's had a great freshman, sophomore year shut it down for his junior season or back away after a minor injury because the name Marcus Lattimore wow. will come up. A guy who was a surefire first-round pick, got injured in his junior year, Drafted in the fourth round, but never made it back to the field. And mm -hmm. that story still is out there now that people talk about. Wow. And I think at some point, when you talk about running backs, not other players, but because of the wear and tear and the risk of injury, I think it will happen at some point. Yeah, apparently, you're going to take a risk. And let's go back to Adnan, who never shuts it down. All right, thank you very much, Mark. By the way, let's stay positive when it comes to the Blue Jays and all that chatter. On the road, they're going to be fine. Georgia, Tennessee, how about this play? Grayson Lambert to Reggie Davis, over 200 all-purpose yards for him, 31 all in Knoxville. Mark? Hey, Adnan, from Scarborough to Etobicoke, up to Steeles Avenue, all the way down to Lakeshore Boulevard. They're, they're upset about what's happening with the Blue Jays. 2 nothing, man, in a hole. Now they need Donaldson to, to go off. I mean, he hit one the last, yeah. last night, looked like it was going to get out, didn't happen, could have ended the ball game. They need Josh Donaldson to get on the roll. Joe Carter ain't walking through that door. Nope. Third and four. Nice cut down by Geis. Still on his feet. And finally, neck tied back at the 20 yard line. Well, folks, uh, not quite the 200 yard day plus rushing that most people thought Fournette might go for today. So that streak ends at three. Still. Pretty prolific in 158 rod. And he becomes the 10th guy to get to 1,000 yards in only five games. That mm. is remarkable. He has a shot at getting a couple thousand yards plus this season, which definitely would get him to New York for the Heisman ceremony. Whether he is the guy who wins it or not, we got a yeah. few weeks to figure that out. Dice. Getting to the edge. Stops the clock with one second to go. So LSU can improve to 5-0 on the season. And the guy from the 7th Ward, his neighborhood, his block, Leonard Fournette, doing a big part today offensively. How about that offensive line? Mm. That offensive line did a great job. A couple of hundred yard rushers, 350 yards or so today. Yeah, Pope Boy's got to be on the running backs today. Mm -hmm. Taking the offensive lineman out. 45 to 24 the final as LSU makes it six consecutive wins against South Carolina. And let's go down to Quint with Leonard Fournette. 